And welcome to another episode of She Said, He Said, where the women come first. Today's topic, what causes you to lose interest in the opposite sex, 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 sex. Interest, well, one, what interests someone in the opposite sex? You know what I'm saying? What do we want out of the opposite sex besides sex? Typically, the very first thing is a physical attraction. Normally. Right. Um, All your teeth is clean, white. Yeah. Make sure your smells good. Make sure you got I your mean, stuff situated. There's there's some people out there in love and marriage and ain't even got all that and they were still attracted to each other one way or the other. So, you know, there's there has to be something that draws you to that person first and foremost. So the initial attraction and interest is key in my opinion. Um after that is what determines the re- remainder of the relationship, though. Because I can like you when I meet you at the gas station, but I may not like you six months from now when I really get to know who you are. And that's what we're talking about today. So some of the things we'll discuss today, the key takeaways will be people lose interest for several reasons. Some reasons are baggage from past situations, and some reasons are related to self-esteem issues and worth. I would agree. Mercedes, you indicated that time was uh, one of the subject matters regarding the, to one of the reasons you lose interest. Let's talk about it. We're going to share a couple personal stories today. And there was one in particular where time was an issue. And it wasn't necessarily about us um, meeting or getting together or anything. It was just that that person always stated they were always busy. Um, so I guess it wasn't about meeting. You, you can't meet if the other person doesn't have time. You end up meeting by yourself. So in that particular situation, the person was always busy. He was never available, but he was the one who initiated the contact with me. I didn't try to reach out to him. I didn't try to do any of those things. But once he grasped my interest, it was like after that, he was just unavailable. Then he became available, and then he was once again unavailable. I think the problem with relationships or even just dating nowadays, people are so like, okay with either ghosting people and then coming back like nothing, like nothing's changed. And also making excuses for time. There's a saying that everybody says, people make time for what they want to. People also make time for whom they want to as well. A lot of individuals, when they're telling you they don't have time for you, they're not sitting by themselves. Especially if they have no commitment to you. Not to the ten, they have interest in someone else as well, no matter how good of a person you are. But in order to get to know you, they have to give time. And it seems like time is one of those priceless, rare things today that just does you just don't come by very easily. So and that's why a lot of talking phases never get to dating because people just don't make time anymore unfortunately and that makes a lot of sense because you know initially when you look at somebody you be like oh baby baby and you know what i'm saying oh, so you, fine. Look you at do that. All that stuff that you want to do you you want to get with them you want to you know, you know, doing my today. I'm Merck Jr. In case you didn't notice, um, you want to, <laughs> you know, go all out. So you might take some corners. You might cut some corners regarding your daily life or the things you usually do in order to give that person some attention. Then you and you and snap them or gather them up. Are they in your circle? You got them where you want them, or they they, they got interest? You eventually have to resume your normality, which might be working or you know, if you're a producer, you're making music or a rapper or, you know, whatever, and you're doing what you got to do. Right. Because you might, you might have put those on the back burner while you was actively pursuing this person. And yeah, that's true. And that's, that's life. That's why we have to really take into consideration. If I'm adding this person to my circle, to my life, right. am I going to adequately be able to fit her in and give her what she needs or give him or her what they need as it pertains to this life? Do I have that room or do I need to cut something off or modify my life 
And am I willing to do that? You know what I mean? I guess my thing is if you make the initial contact to court somebody or have a conversation with them, you do know that time is necessary. So why even bother someone if you don't have time? No one has an answer for that. They just interrupt your life and, and disappear. And it's like a common practice today. Everyone is so comfortable with that, and I don't find it to be a respectful manner. If you're no longer interested, say that. But if you are interested and don't have time, say that too. That being said, time is even bigger than that because initially we might've spent a lot of time going out or doing activity things, you know, that, and then we don't take that same time or even that quality time, that time in which we're communicating or spending together, you know, cutting that short, you know, just cutting to the chase, bam, bam, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Not saying that's not, that's necessarily the case, but just saying we don't do the things we used to do when I was actively for lack of better term courting you. I don't even like to use that term because right. is courting even a thing in 2021 you know what i'm saying i still hear some it doesn't old, seem to be i hear some old cats like me and merc might be talking about it but i don't see, see the young g's like we didn't give the game to our sons you know what i'm saying which is true and that would mean your sons would be a little bit younger but close to my age and this generation these millennials are just not courting they're not doing anything um just to openly say what it is Everybody's gonna fuck. I'm not gonna sit there and let you lie on my age and saying that they will be close to your age. (laughs) No, he's 22, so stop playing. (laughs) Uh, uh, Well, you know, no, that's not a millennial. That's like Gen Z, whatever. But the point is, they still are like, you know, 20s, 30s, young. You could definitely have a 30 year old, right? No? Let's see. Let's see. 43, 30. I would have to. No, nah, you would have been, to be like fifteen. Yeah, and I was. I didn't start having sex till I was sixteen. Okay. And then that I was, works too. And that was only because you know it was my rival gang's member, like a rival gang, one of their sisters, and they're just doing it just for that that gang clout. She wouldn't even nothing that I would even want to talk about. Like, I don't even mention her name in, in circles. You know what I'm saying? I just say yeah, sex at sixteen. Um, I don't say who it was with because if they said, oh, you had sex with her, they'd be like, eh, her, you know what I'm saying? So, no, 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 we're not going to go there. Know, you know what I'm <laughs> we'll save that right. for the book from Crypto Counselor. Um, but yeah, time, you know what I'm saying? You make sure that you do, basically, my mom always said this, don't start something you can't keep up. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good thing. But, but a lot of people don't live by that. Right. And that's the same thing when it comes to going out to expensive dinners. If you ain't used to paying $130, $140 for dinner, don't and you have it. to tip off the top 20%, making that up to $150, $160, then don't start that trend. Because if you can't keep up with it, don't do it. Yeah, that's like living above your means 100%. Right, right, right. And I know, you know, the first date we want to go out because we don't want to look cheap because I've heard people say, I heard women say, I might have been in this situation myself. You go to Applebee's. Oh, this nigga took me to Applebee's on my first date. Fuck him. We ain't going out again. Or even, you know, a a slight upgrade. Let's say Red Lobster, the same thing. Them bitches want to go to... The, the bohemian restaurant that costs 60 and 70 dollars a plate bitch i don't even know you to invest in you like that you know what i'm saying i agree i agree 100 like because I, maybe a first date shouldn't be restaurants we already know that first date should never be a movie because you can't talk in the movies we can't we can't relate you know what i'm saying but maybe we should take restaurants off the first date list because one, it's an investment. In some people's mind, it might be an investment. Like, I better get something out of this after I spent this loot. I'm not saying people really think like that, but actually, I do know some people that think like that. Um, and vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I know women that know that, that think like that, too. If he took me to this restaurant, I'm expected to give us a kunani. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You know, we live in some very strange times. 
the TV shows, the media that we watch impact this all the way around. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying we need wholesome TV, but remember girlfriends and living single, you know what I'm saying? Not saying that was the best picture. They, they went up a real problem. We are yeah. or what we should be about, but it's a far cry from what we have today with the housewives and the um, loving hip hops and whatever else reality TV for air quote lack of terms we want to utilize that people model themselves after. Our music models itself after. This reality we are in is highly influenced by the media that these youth experience. It's disgusting. Right. And not even knowing the formula. You don't have to live it to be a to live it to rap about it. Rap is an entertainment. You don't have to be a real drug dealer to talk about drug dealing. It may feed the story, but just be a storyteller. Nas probably right. stopped selling drugs at 15 years old. Yeah, he still represents, you know, in, in his rap, but I'm sure at 40 something years old, how old, how old is Nas? 46 maybe? Um yeah. He's not still drug dealing. You know what I'm saying? Let's not be ridiculous. Oh, no. It's a form and you don't even need to anymore. Right. It's a form of entertainment. But, you know, we digress. You know, I pulled a Merc on it because I'm baby Merc today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so one thing that I will say before we move on to the next segment or next portion, time is priceless and very valuable. It's, it's valuable. Right. Once you waste it or waste someone's time, you can't get it back they can't get it back. And I wish people would consider that before wasting somebody's time and then in turn ghosting them. You leave emotional hinges behind, like bits and pieces. You can't do people like that. That's more time wasted. You're so right. You're right. maybe that'll change. Maybe maybe I was just born in the wrong generation. But, you know. I know. Maybe just the wrong person at the wrong time. You know what I'm saying? Maybe the wrong person, period. I find that we meet more wrongs than we ever meet rights. And sometimes oh, yeah. Mr. Wrong meets Mrs. Right, but at the wrong time for him to be the Mr. Right he, that he needs to be for her. And that was confusing, but I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. He met the woman that could have been good for him, but Facts. it wasn't time. Bad time. One of the situations I had maybe once or twice in my, my lifetime, maybe more, but two definitely stand out. It's like, you know, you're getting to know them, you're going out, you're being fancy, you're being respectful, you're courting, you courting, you know what I'm saying? But then she reveals to you that you, she doesn't think it can go any further because one, you've already had the experience of having children and being previously married. And she wants somebody to have that fresh experience, that fresh experience of a first child, that fresh experience of being married, not someone who already has something to draw on by their past. And I could totally respect that. that. Because when I'm with somebody, yeah. or when I'm digging with somebody, I want them to be happy and make sure they make the right choices for themselves. But I'm All pretty right. sure you knew that way earlier than the first, at least by the first date, you know what I'm saying? Right, of course. And I can respect that. If I'm not for you, like I said, I'm not for everybody. But what I'm not gonna do is allow you to waste my time because you like me, somebody else could love me. Therefore, if I'm not your preference, just let me go. Just, it's just that simple. A lot of people won't do that, though. They want to keep you around because you're beneficial or whatever it may be. While they reap the benefits of who you are. And I can totally, I can totally understand that perspective because fresh is fresh. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure after my first child, the second child experience, even though I was more seasoned, it ain't gonna be like the first time or the first time where we was daunting and we lost sleep versus the second time we knew we, we gotta take shifts on this shit. So, you know, we, I have an experience that she does not have and that she would want a person with a fresh perspective who doesn't have that experience. To me, common sense would be like, get a veteran, get somebody that's already been through the ringer that way they know how to navigate this thing better because I promise you, the first round, whew, boy, I learned a lot since then. I'm a much better position now based on, you know, that first round, if you dig what I'm saying. And she, my ex-wife will tell you that hurt with her own mouth. You know what I'm saying? You're a much better person now. I'm sorry, we haven't even broken for a little bit. But... And it kind of hurts to hear that, you know what I'm saying? But respectfully, we grow. You know, I got, I got married relatively young. So, of course, I was immature, just stupid things. You know what I'm saying? 
the things I'm not going to do today because I'm grown, more mature, more sure of myself, you know? Right. I agree. Right. And for me, um, I tend to continue to meet men with no kids for some reason. And it's kind of hard um, because I have five kids. So it makes dating hard. It definitely does. So I haven't met anybody that come. I, I take it back. I did meet one guy who waited six months to say, oh, I, you know, you do have a lot of kids. It's a little bit too much for me. What, nobody, no real woman is going to hide her kids. So if you know how many kids she has up front and it's not for you, you need to make the decision right then and there because someone else may accept her. And I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like six months. I mean, I'm pretty sure he had that inkling in his mind from day one. And I know your kids. Your kids are very respectful, very beautiful kids, very well mannered. Yeah. Whatever Mercedes say is done. They don't give you no problems like that. You know what I'm saying? So they're not they gonna know that conflictual thing in the relationship in which he has to rise up and be part of the um, solution. Yeah, that's just not the case for you and your kids. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. They are very well behaved kids and they are, they know better. Right. Mama, mama I, I feel like I've done a good job raising them. Indeed. So anybody who doesn't want to be. Definitely. And I've known you well over 10 years. So yeah, definitely. Right. Now, as far as, um, my kids going dating, I don't think we're a single mother, especially if you have older like me, on top of having an active baby daddy. Mm-hmm. Right with my kids that much because you're not going to But a lot of men don't realize, even if we were to get married, they got a daddy they're going to run, you know, travel with, spend time with for weeks and months at a time. Right. I, I think a lot of these men assume that they have to take responsibility as if, you know, the kids are little. All you got to do is be my kid's friend. Right. Everything else that they have a father. There you go. So, but you know, I don't argue with him. I let him go because that's how you go. feel, that and then let's talk about. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna cause an issue later down the line. Better to catch it early than later. You know what I'm saying? Better to catch it early before I invest time, money, my life, my heart, my household. Right. You know what I'm saying? Only for you to just my vacation to start again. Fuck you. Give me my money. No, this way. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm with you there. All right, all right, all right. For you, you've lost interest in relationships mainly because you saw some signs. Right. So just to share my little story. So I was talking to this guy and I don't, this, this is actually kind of terrible, so don't be me. But this guy would never tell me where he worked. And I'll go ahead and let you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not the type to date a drug dealer, for example. So he would never tell me where he worked or anything like that. Well, I found out on my own, he was a drug dealer. And I'm just not into that. But I'm going to tell you how I found out. It wasn't that I didn't just find out. So, you know, over time, we're at parties and different things like that. And different things are going on in front of me or away from me or wherever, and I'm starting to notice. And when I say something, oh, no, 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 it's nothing like that. Okay, so then what is it? Then outside of parties in different places like that, it was always, I got to make a run, I got to do this, I got to do that. And he would never had time. Well, that's a different type of sign. That's pretty obvious what he's doing. So for me, I let it go. Well, he came back around and we started conversing again. And you know what? That wasn't even a problem that time around because he started working. He got on the straight and narrow. Years had passed. He had got into some trouble, got out of it. He was doing right. So that wasn't a problem. These signs that started to pop out was that he actually already had a girlfriend. Before he went to jail, of course, I had I'd already cut him off a long time ago. But um, he had a girlfriend. And little things like he wouldn't text after 10 o'clock. Or he wouldn't call or answer the phone at a certain time. And for a while, he lied to me and told me he worked third shift. Come to find out he worked first shift. They were living together. But it was the, it was the little, the small things, like almost like clockwork at 10 o'clock. There would be no more text messages. And at 7 o'clock in the morning, oh, I fell asleep. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you notice things like that. Or when he would go on trips um to different places 
I would never see all the pictures he posted. He probably was like, you, know, what, you can customize it. Cleaned his life up, which he did as far as that goes. But when it comes down to who he was as a person, his character, which I didn't get to know the first time, it showed he was, he was, he had a girlfriend the whole time. Um, and I actually found out because she, re well, I didn't find out. I saw the signs of him being distant and she eventually reached out to me on Facebook when she went through his phone. It was pretty obvious. I, I could have walked away when I started noticing it, but I did. Sometimes you want to give people the benefit of the doubt. Indeed, indeed. Um, one of my stories, I probably have more, but this one that comes to mind because I was reminded of it during a recent yeah. podcast recording in which I interviewed her regarding domestic violence. <clears throat> oh, wow. So um, I used to go with um, a person from my native country here in um, North Carolina some years back. And... Um, so we were dating. The relationship was good. I could actually see myself getting married to her. You know what I'm saying? I saw a future with her. You know, we did all the things. A beautiful, 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 beautiful relationship. Very beautiful woman. But she had a lot of stuff going on. She had a lot of baggage. She had a lot of things that she experienced that pretty much formed her future view or her present view. That I was aware of some of it, but not all of it. Not to the extent. Let's just be honest. So one day we're at IHOP, because that used to be my favorite restaurant. And, um, you know, we ordering, whatever we ordering, you know what I'm saying? I go for the Kamala, the um, Colorado omelet, which comes with the unstackable, all stack pancakes, you know what I'm saying? With that drippy, drippy, warm syrup. And um, <laughs> she says something. I can't remember what she said. It was just something silly. And I flipped her off, you know, just, a, just in passageway, you know what I'm saying? I got Italian descent. We, we're kind of disrespectful, you know what I'm saying? Um... And she just got real quiet. And I said, what's wrong with you? And she ain't say nothing. She ain't say nothing. She ain't say a word. So, you know, we paid the check. We go back to the house or whatever. And she packed her stuff and she left. She lives in a neighboring city. She lived in um, Burlington, which is about 45 minutes away. She said, I got to go. I'll talk to you later. But she didn't talk to me later. Like when she usually would have talked to me. And then she called me and she told me, she said, you know, when you flip me off at the IHOP, you know what I'm saying? It reminded me of a past in which I was beat by my boyfriend and it started small. He started with small things and then it escalated to physical violence. You know what I'm saying? That nearly took my life. And I'm never ever right. going to go through that again. So we can't go together no more. We're done. Please don't contact me. Please don't do this, that, 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 that. And she, she packed her stuff up and she moved to New York, which was where she was from. And I didn't hear from her for a long time. And she reached out. We got back in contact. We started talking. To, but not like that. Just friends. You know what I'm saying? She had a whole new life. She was married. Had children now. And um, yeah, that was that. You know what I'm saying? Just one thing, no matter how small it may seem to you, might be triggering for somebody else if they haven't un unpacked that baggage. Uh, we, it came up again, kind of, sort of. Um, I had on a, a podcast recording, which we were discussing domestic violence. And I think she, yeah, yeah, she was going, she was seeing the therapist. So she taught her therapist about it. And her therapist says, release yourself of all the baggage. Anybody connected to anything that triggers you, let them go. So she contacted me. She said, Felipe, we can't talk no more. My therapist thinks that it's not a good idea. This is very triggering for me. It's taking me to a dark place. And um, I can't, because we're supposed to do some other um, podcast recordings regarding the holistic approach to therapy, mind, body, soul. And she said she wanted to be able to do that. And I said, I understand. They said, I don't, I never did anything to hurt you. Don't want to do anything to hurt you. If that's what you got to do for you, please do. I right. Do nothing but the best. Can I say I'm built? If I ain't with you, I ain't with you. But I don't want nothing bad to happen to you. I still want you to have your best life. You know what I mean? Right. Even if we can't be friends. Right, right, right. Or By not, all means, live man. your best life. You can still follow me on Instagram. You can still get them beautiful memes I post. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, and all that comes to this because these 
lack of interest, us falling away from interest contributes to us not transitioning to that beautiful place that many call marriage. Oh no, we aren't on the same page these days. If we're not on the same page, the M -word. we can't go forward into marriage. If we don't have the same values, if we don't have the same foundation, we can't go forward with marriage, right? It's been a in our people, it's been a large trend in people, less and less and less and less people getting married. With an upper trend of more and more and more and more people getting divorced. One, in the, you know, our grandma and them, they didn't really have that option. They did, but they didn't. Why? Because most of them didn't really work to the degree in which they could really, you know, stabilize their house or be okay. They depended yeah. on their mate, my grandma. My grandfather had a whole family on my grandma that lived right next door. God damn, this nigga was bold as shit. <laughs> oh, he was bold. <laughs> But she stayed in that relationship until the day he died. And why? Because he was a provider. And though he won't about shit, and he won't about nothing, he provided. And her little menial job cleaning up houses and taking care of this old woman in, in, the, in White Town was not going to suffice for the life that she was accustomed to living. You know what I mean? That's right. These days, women, black that. women especially make more on most instances, as a whole anyway, than black men. So what is it? What's the equation? I ain't gotta put up with no nigga shit. Period. Right. Period. Put some respect on my name, nigga. What? And that's right. What and we don't have to put up with the bullshit that our 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 moms and our dads and uh, our moms and our dads and especially our grandmas and them had to put up with. If you ain't, if it ain't working out, uh, uh huh, nigga. Bye. You know what I'm saying? My house. My car, what's that song by Little Weeby? Independent, I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D. -E -E yep. And that's real. Beyonce paved the way and showing these bitches how it got to be done. But let me tell you one thing about Beyonce. She got a husband. And he won't about she shit either. <laughs> but she, she stayed. Too. And why did she right. stay? We'll never know. It's her own reasons, her own demons she has to deal with. Maybe because she saw it in her father and her mother as he cheated throughout that whole relationship until she finally yeah. said, enough, nigga, what? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And Tina is amazing. She's, you know, she, she got a new, a new man mm -hmm. and she's living her best life. There you go. Because you mad at her? What, what we tend to do when we go through toxic situations, we don't realize that there can be better out there because our vision of the trauma that we just went through is still cloudy and it takes a lot to bounce back from something like that um especially when a situation can be demeaning somebody tearing you down calling you um, out of your name putting his hands on you whatever it, it can be triggering like what you mentioned before mm -hmm. you never know what can trigger somebody right um but speaking of marriage so i had a friend today make a post and this kind of ties into what we're talking about tonight he said every woman i'm nowadays is just so ready to date to marry and i'm not ready for that or something along those lines um which i will say one thing when it comes down to talking about marriage or whatever with people nowadays a lot of people ain't ready for it and that's just the way this generation of people is no matter whether you're 20 or 40 everybody's just they want to get married, but they don't know what to do to maintain a marriage. So the men aren't providers anymore. Women are. And it's just one of those situations where it depends on how you were brought up and, and raised or even what you learned over the years as an adult, right from wrong, is, is pretty much common sense. But I don't think this generation can survive at the at the rate of marriage without divorce as our parents and grandparents did back in the day they can't they these popcorn relationships aren't lasting six months anymore so that's exactly what it is popcorn relationship pop 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 goes my love yeah. in and out two minutes <laughs> you know, well i ain't gonna say all that you know what i'm saying i can go uh <laughs> 
good 40 minutes to an hour. You know what I'm saying? If I use my tantra techniques, I can go a little bit longer. So it all depends on the juices that's flowing on the women. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God. I'm, you know, I'm getting my yeah, that definitely didn't come out right. Tantra techniques. What you know about that? Bam, 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 bam. But that doesn't sustain a relationship. You can only do so much bamming. You have to have other things in place. You got to focused on your career you got to be financially stable you got to be mentally stable you have to be physically healthy you know what i'm saying and you have to be prepared and then if there are kids involved right and be willing to compromise you gotta be. be willing to grow and be willing to adapt and give a little and take a little versus not reciprocating i think that's my biggest thing if it ain't reciprocated I can't fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about reciprocation. It doesn't have to be 100% reciprocation. I'm with you. But to some degree, there needs to be some reciprocation. Reciprocation. Everything can't be on me. Everything shouldn't be on me. You shouldn't have all these expectations of me and then don't bring nothing to the table. That's bullshit. You know what I mean? That's exactly how people are nowadays. Like, I was talking to a friend of mine, and um, she was like, you know, men expect women to be everything top tier 10 across the board or they give like mediocre three four five and i'm not just gonna say men in general because i know there are women out there like that too they want a man to be a provider um buy her this do that let her be a stay-at-home mom be all these things while she simply just does bare minimal and, uh, and let's not even talk about getting into a relationship that leads to a marriage and then the sex life changes. Oh, that's another story for another day. But at some some point, husband or wife, you gotta uphold your end of the relationship. And I don't think people take accountability for what part they are supposed to play with a partner in a relationship nowadays. If they even care to. Indeed, because people are selfish and they're greedy and they're downright immature in their approach to relationships it's all about me 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 instead of we 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 i don't even know if that makes sense but i think you get the gist i mean I yeah there's no we anymore we are too egocentric you know what i'm saying like we're not even doing we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing to be in a relationship or to give in a relationship and vice versa you know what i'm saying like, oh, you want me to do this this and that but you ain't doing shit but like, god damn what the fuck you know what i'm saying like really I don't understand. I mean, you want me to bend over backwards to accommodate this relationship, but you ain't moved an inch. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. You know what I mean? Right. Exactly. If it I ain't agree. Right, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Real talk, man. You know what I'm saying? Shit. I'm getting mad. I agree 100%. My medicine went off. Hold up now. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. Been a, some solutions to the issue would be better more effective communication at the beginning at the start you know what i'm saying if you're afraid to say what your values are or what you want in a relationship on day one or two <laughs> bitch you just played yourself nigga you just played yourself you know what i'm saying and wasted your own time you wasting your time you wasting their time nigga you wasting your money you wasting her time nigga you wasting your resources you wasting her time you know what I'm or vice versa the bitch that might be the woman because you know let's just be honest if you ask me to go out, I think you should pay. And if I ask you to go out, I think I should pay. Now, I know, agree. we might have a caveat in which you pay. And as a gentleman or a gentlewoman, I'll tip or, you know, whatever, but, or buy the drinks or the appetizers or whatever. But I say all that to say this, you know what I'm saying? These, these social norms that we find ourselves in, it's like these girls want to be so modern, but then want to be so old school. God damn, bitch. What you want? You want to be independent or not? Get right. the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Which one? <laughs> yeah. Which one? You want to be a stay-at-home mom and have your own money and you don't need nothing from a nigga. Mm -hmm. But who's, who's, who's um, you know, stabilizing your lifestyle to yeah. make sure that you can work from home or stay at home without working? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, these women don't realize how much it takes to uphold the family. And these men nowadays, a lot of them don't know how to. There go. So it's a lose-lose situation. There you go. There's this guy I follow on um, Instagram. I think his name is Kevin Samuels. You, you know him? I don't he's, think so. Oh, he's such an asshole. But he be telling the truth, though. The bitches be getting mad. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The one that did the video with the girl. 
who <laughs> said she wanted a husband of a certain caliber. Right, right. He was yeah, I remember him. Six and the, the bitch, she thought she was an eight or eight and a half. He said, nah, bitch, you a six. She said, well, yeah. I, I want to be like Beyonce. Well, Beyonce's not even a 10. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, communication. Like we said before, many other episodes and even when we just talk about whatever we talk about, we both agree that communication is the Achilles heel of any relationship, whether it's business, as we know, based on our work with Geechee One Magazine and films, or even in our, our pursuit of happiness regarding a relationship, our boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, etc. You know what I'm saying? Communication is the Achilles heel of any type of relationship. So what we must strive to do is be better, more effective communicators. Mercedes, last words. Right. Last word. Last word. That's all you got to say is right. Yeah, right. We know your last name is right. What else? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. For some reason, the, the audio broke up just a little bit. So oh, okay. sorry about that, guys out there. I hope the I hope the recording caught it. This episode, I mean, this all episodes brought to you by Mercedes Wright, the she host, F. Christopher Blue, the he host, and our president. Though she does not join us because she's busy, busy doing busy, busy things. Odafole Okwe, who conceptualized this show many years ago. Thank you. Be well. Be great. Good night. Compton for life. And this is Merck, <laughs> Merck Jr. And I'm out this bitch. <laughs>